Hi everybody. Um, good morning, evening, afternoon, good day from Indonesia. My name is Nita and I work for Conservation International in Indonesia. It's an honor to be here um, in between the other excellent speakers and today I would like to share about my work on Monterey Tourism Management. So talking about Monterey Tourism, today I would like to share and bring us to know about this space yes and what are the threats to Monterey and how we can support to conserve uh, Monterey tourism. Also, we're going to discuss about uh, the tourism development, some challenges and also lesson learning. So when we talk about Monterey, it's one of the biggest species in the world. And then as you see that this is very special because uh, you can see the shape is unusual compared to other fish, especially because of the wingspan can reach up to seven meters long. And Monterey also have, consists of two different uh, species, which is um, Monterey birostris or the oceanic, and also Monterey uh, alfredi or the reef Monterey. Both of them you can uh, find or see them in Indonesia. They are very harmless. They are gentle giants. Uh, only eat plankton, so they feel for feeder. Don't worry, they're not gonna hurt you. They're not gonna eat me. Um, the the female Monterey only having a pup in between two to six years. Uh, so that's why it's this fish is very uh, vulnerable. Um, based on the lifespan, it can reach up to 50 years and also potential for long distance migration. Uh, at the moment, the protections of uh, Manta Ray World Wild is uh, very important because this is vulnerable, especially uh, for trade, um, like the Chinese medicines uh, utilize the gills for to kill cancer. And Indonesia in the early 2000s also contributed to the landing of um, shark and ray fisheries. But fortunately, the number is declining slowly and getting better, but still in other places of the world, it's still um, high, high threats. Be besides trading, also other trades from and responsible tourism from microplastic, um, infrastructure development in the coastal areas, uh, shipments, and also traditional hunting. The protections of Mantaray has been declared uh, quite a long time. And then like IUCN, CMS, and also CITES has listed the uh, Mantaray as endangered species. And in Indonesia, it's fully protected by the Indonesian law. So, what can we do, or what we do, what we do as a conservation organization to protect uh, manta ray? So, we collect data by uh, taking photo IDs of each individual, and also uh, conduct a uh, satellite tag to record uh, the movements and then to record the uh, the sightings of the Mantarays by working together with the local community, the university, the tourism operators. And why? Because these data are very important and we, so we know which areas are important for the Mantaray and then we can uh, propose the areas to be protected. Like in Indonesia, there are four main areas of hotspots for Mantarays and these areas are designated as uh, protected areas with the uh, targeted conservation in Manta Rays. On the other side, Manta Rays not only valuable for the ecosystem, but also uh, on the economic aspect, which is from the previous study, uh, it has been uh, 
confirm that the encounter from diving or snorkeling or observing can um, develop uh, economic value uh, and can reach up to one million rupiah, uh, one million dollars, sorry, one million is dollar. While when it's dead, each individual only value for for five hundred US dollar. So how can we make uh, the Manta Ray tourism and conservation together uh, in balance, and that this is the challenges. That's why we have to work together, all the stakeholders, by um, working on the data and then conducting a number of analysis or studies on carrying capacity, lack of acceptable change, and then designing special planning and designing the encounter activities, encounter areas, the code of conduct, procedures, and etc. Like seeing on the screen, these are the information that will be provided to the tourist and tourism operator before they go for tourism encounter with Mantares. So they have to know about Mantares conservation, they have to know the exit and entry of each uh, snorkeling or diving activities. They also need to know how long they can go for the activities. Like uh, each of the two operators has to make a reservation one day before. And one hour, it's only maximum up to 20 people or 20 divers plus snorkelers uh, at one time. And then, so it, it, it is important for the tourists to um manage manage this with the local local rangers and also each of the tourists needs to pay for uh, payment ecosystem services which is uh, all the all the um, income from the tourism are gonna come back to support the conservation both for patrol monitoring uh, activities and other interpretation material that has to be developed. Uh, this is one of the example of the site in Raja Ampat where there's a small range of course where all the tourists has to stop there after they made the reservation one day before. So to make sure that the tourists understand uh, about the do's and the don'ts on Mantare tourism and interaction. And then so they also need to wait uh, in a queue before they go into the water. And once they go into the water, there are a number of, of rules and procedures where the divers, they cannot swim around. They have to stay in one place uh, as a passive observer. And then uh, they have a maximum of one hour to observe. And when they finish, the guide will take them out into the exit part. Uh, and it works the same for the snorkelers. These local ranges are the local community that has been educated and then work for the protected area management. In addition, the women around the areas also participate in uh, patrol. Uh, this is quite interesting because uh, after they do the routine at home, they support the activities by uh, checking the tourism operators, the due diligence, the paperwork, and etc., to ensure that they understand uh, the important areas for Manta Rays and then um, the regulations uh, in the protected areas and etc. And so uh, these women are doing patrol regularly and supported by uh, the other stakeholders to help uh, to, to help them to increase their knowledge and understanding. Besides that, other women within this area in Raja Ampat also uh, campaign Mantari conservation by adding the value of the local handicrafts. So before the handicraft design, is limited into a bag, um, boxes, and etc. But because Mantare is so important for the conservation and the economic, 
values and then they're adding the values of the local tradition and design design the souven the souvenirs uh with the shape of manta rays and and then so at the same time they campaign about how important the space is for them so what are the lessons learned when we talk about manta ray tools and management we talk about how we manage the people the human the tourists the rangers the operators all the stakeholders that use the areas that um, use uh, or that would like to see the manta ray so how you have how we manage it by conducting studies by having data by managing when the tourists can come by um, scheduling uh, the, the best time for the tourists to do the encounter uh, and at the same time not disturbing the activities of the manta rays because as we know there are different different areas uh, utilized for different purposes for the manta ray including feeding mating uh, cleaning and nursing and then so by having the data we know what is what kind of adaptive management that we can uh, develop for manta ray tourism and then we need to spread the crowd when we know the the movement of the manta rays and then we know the the areas where the manta rays are aggregate then we can spread the numbers of tourists and then so there is no uh that there is not not the vol the vol we can control the volume of the tourists every day because we already have the study of the carrying capacity and then to ensure that uh the number of the tourists is uh, is can be controlled and so at the same time we also need to distribute this number and of course not until not only that we still need to control the behavior so what's the point the number of the tourists if the behavior is still irresponsible yes this is very important education interpretation information adding into into the package and engage the tourist operators and the stakeholders as citizen scientists by taking photos and then uh, reporting to the management. I hope this information is valuable and it can be adopted into other places uh, around the world. Thank you very much for your attention. And if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to send me an email and then uh, I will respond as soon as possible. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Really interesting, interesting stuff. So I, I we do have her paper on sustainable manta ray tourism on the Padlet. And um, when we send out make, and make available the abstracts from today's speakers, I will her contact info will be on there in case you missed her email on the slide if you have questions. So we're